Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is LoyXP, and the Caves and Cliffs update part 2 is here. But while the rest of the Minecraft community runs to the hills and does some epic spelunking, to the best of our knowledge the update hasn't arrived on the Hermitcraft server yet. This might be largely due to the phenomenon of recording lag, since it takes time to edit and publish episodes after you've recorded them, but they also have to wait for various server plugins and mods to get up to speed as well. So if you're champing at the bit for the hermits to explore new terrain, watch this space, by which we mean watch the area where the moon isn't. Another thing we've got to talk about is how sometimes there's a server-wide spleef tournament where every hermit is hoping you'll check out their perspective, and you run a recap show so you pretend you didn't hear Grian say he won the tournament just so your audience isn't discouraged from watching everyone else's perspectives before they even come out. If you are wondering why we left that nugget of information out, well there it is. The Hermits decided to only release their own rounds in their own videos. Cubfan's Dripleaf Spleef is scattered across a dozen other people's channels, tempting our editor to make an hour-long supercut. Sorry folks, I checked and uh, I'm pretty sure that's just straight piracy. The rest of his week Cubfan spends working away on his enchanted desert base. His ever-giving quest for adding more complicated blocks into the palette drives Cub to introduce raw copper blocks into the red sands of the area, which of course breaks up the monotone orange quite nicely. This is when Tango shows up to inform Cub that in fact, the moon big, and the two of them have a ponder on the options the players have left. Ah, uh, that's bad. Yeah, that's that's not good. It's also um, bad. I think I'm just gonna like hide from it, you know? Hide. Just like, oh, you know, all right. Just, just just peace out, you know? Oh. Just get straight up. That'll and then, work. Boom, Cause yeah, you know? I mean, a three block hole that'll stop a moon. I mean, Cub actually has an entire mole people base we could go hang out in. Although I, mean, I don't think we're supposed to know it's him. <laughs> Bringing a more scientific approach to the issue, Tango Tech builds up a whole Hassa facility in hopes to sort out exactly how and why Moon Big. New Hassa telescope is putting us light years ahead of the competition. When the regular spyglass doesn't cut it, a larger telescope is employed. And so Tango returns alarming results, with how the JPEG on the skybox has been growing, the moon's orbit should be decaying, and decaying at an alarming speed. Conclusion. The moon's orbital distance is shrinking by 5,176 kilometers per day? What? Of course, these calculations range from the cosmic to purely cosmetic, seeing as how Minecraft is not real life, last I checked, and so the data from which he's extrapolating, as well as the very concept of a mile, is completely alien to the world in question. Hashtag metric gang for life. By comparison, Joe Hills has a much more rudimentary looking, but much more grounded in the universe it exists in system of measuring the moon circumference of celestial bodies. Utilizing two block pillars and the parallax effect from his two human eyes, Joe's been keeping track of the moon's expansion for a couple of weeks now. He also addresses the issue with the world shrinking theory, since you'd think the sun would be getting bigger too. So wouldn't you know. the sun change as well in that instance? No, because the sun's further away from us, and so it's actually the same effect I was talking about before. Mm. The further away something is, the um, less, less quickly it, it, it seems to have... Yeah. Unfortunately, all his science accomplishes is convincing Zombie Cleo to start panicking. Uh, oh, but should I be spiraling? Anyway. Is this a thing that I should be doing? I'll, le I'll let you see the data and then draw your own conclusions, okay? okay? okay. And it is then convenient that her next armor stand posing job takes Cleo to XB Crafted's pad where he wanted a walking mech bot assembled. I just love his spindly little, it does look like it's gonna fall over. The resident Mr. Crafted is growing increasingly paranoid about the state of the moon and busts out the cork board and the red string to assemble his own pet theory, namely that the Big Eyes crew is responsible. He alleges that their plan is to give the man in the moon laser eye surgery so he can join their crew, and that a few settings got tweaked along the way and they ended up with a tractor beam. And it's only getting bigger, so I don't know if they're still zapping it, if they just missed, or, you know, there's not actually a man in the moon. Either way, he can safely get an overview of Big Eye's territory with a 4x4 map he spreads out over the central table of his new bunker, which he's presumably built so when everyone else figures out what's really going on with the moon, he can be debunked. Well, uh, I'm trying to figure this out. So the contractors, those freaking guys, I think that I'm so right about my theory that they, uh, they've been paid off. 
The rations will be spread real thin, though, now that Corrales invited himself into the place as well. So what is what is this offer that I got? Ooh, repeat? that offer. Uh, I'm moving in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's the offer. Though somehow it seems Corrales wants to play it both ways, since he also built a space station to potentially wait out whatever Tremors land world goes through in. Perhaps he has realized that the thing is in entirely too low an orbit, like should be crashing into his house kind of low. A similar idea comes to full symmetry and Gemini Tay, by which we mean the crash into house. We did it, we've planned out the bunker, and it's looking kind of cool. I kind of like it. It's very cool, what a good bunker. We could live here for like a hundred years, right? Two-thirds of the Swamp Lump group burrow under the marsh for their own version of secure catacombs, which distinctly resemble Tinfoil Chef's base from a couple of seasons ago. Though the two ladies clearly had their thinking frog hats on, and actually bothered to rope in some livestock for when the natural mob spawns inevitably end up flattened into too thin to parmesan. Chicken chillin' in chill room. Some of their server mates have been working on underground facilities the whole time, although TFC has just got the infrastructure where he wants it. A rail system are bringing him to the latest stretch of tunnels, and some shulkers ready to collect the resources in. Aiming to get back into the swing of recording regularly, TFC also stops by Botum to spend some of his branch mining riches on some shroom light illumination. Is that a satellite dish or something? <laughs> but things at Botum are moving fast, so he settles for some glowstone from the G train and taking the scenic route home. Nothing like a stroll in the moonlight, especially when there's so much moonlight to go around. Oh boy, that's going to take all week to set. <laughs> Vintage Beef has a similar experience this week, but in reverse, marbling at the night sky before descending into the caves for some Q&A caving, because hitting hard material deserves some hard-hitting questions to go with it. Do you wish you kept up with the Minecraft guys more? First of all, you have no idea how much I check in with them. I really don't check in with them a lot, and I, and I wish I do. I do wish I checked in with them more. He gets a good look at the caves before they change forever in 1.18, although going mining during an earthquake may not have been the safest idea. And it's going to be tough to ever go back to how it was before. Uh, next question. This is a bad place to read questions. The tremors are felt even on the other side of the IRL Earth, and it's more than just the groundbreaking prices at Padlamico. Pearlescent Moon tries to bring some peace to the week by tidying up the remaining moonkins from the scavenger hunt, working on some castle interiors, and considering hosting a game of hide and seek. So, this is pretty cute. Let's have a look at it from the front door, shall we? There we go, I am starting to like how this is coming together. I but even in peacetime, there's a hint of conflict as she throws down in the Dripleaf Spleef Arena and notices the Amogus crewmates popping up around Botum. Unsure who to blame, she retaliates against more or less everyone with a series of anti-gravity llama statues. But I definitely have to say this is going to be one of my favorite ones because we went a little bit extra and that was just a perfect opportunity to make the Heli Llama. They aren't the only ones feeling the gravity of the situation. Rendog is starting work on Octagon Town, beginning with the Auditorium, which we entirely failed to catch the pun from last week, our bad, when a chunk of the moon falls from the sky and smashes through the chicken farm. And if you're now getting deja vu from last week, it may just be a glitch in the Her Matrix. Crank war over with the goats? Like, why now with the blowing up? Oh my goodness, look at the damage, the whole... The thing is destroyed. Doc M has definitely noticed his fair share of those, including anti-gravity phenomena affecting not just players and llama statues, but the very blocks of the world around them. While he's time-lapsing the area around the eight spawner chunk into an obelisk, turning all the surrounding ocean to ice in the process, Doc sees a few blocks in the distance float into the air for a second or two. I'm really losing my mind here. He calls Cubfan in to observe the phenomenon, which seems to be increasing day by day. Go there and see, like it seems they're literally floating up and falling back in place. Yeah, yeah, it does seem like that, yeah. Let's see if, let's, does it, okay, I see one in the distance there, it's too far. There, there, oh, there's there, one right straight, here. straight. Right get it, yeah, get, yeah. get it, get it, oh, it's already, it's already, it's already gone back, it's already gone back. He returns to Octo Town to find Rendog a changed man, and a change seems to come over Doc as well. The Moon Rock speaks to them, requesting that they save the rest of the server, starting with Mumbo. Maybe. Oh. Open your ears! Hear her, Doc! Hear, for she speaketh to us, here in this here chamber. 
We hope Mombo isn't beyond saving at this point, but he seems to share similar feelings for the moon than Doc and Ren do, declaring himself a mooner and building a shrine to the moon itself, starting with stone Easter Island heads that cry when it's daytime, and ending with a fire pit in the center into which supplicants can throw their bed, ringing a bell to toll an end to sleep as they know it. Hey, if they're gonna fire me as the leader of Botum, then I'll create my own thing to be a leader of. It might be a cult, that might be a bad thing. This whole thing feels like hermit challenges all over again. Speaking of challenges, Mumbo defies conventions in Botum and finishes the back of his robot, because when it's a more solid shape, it's easier for it to throw shade on the neighbors. Impulse SV might be trying to reach the moon a different way. After some frustrations with shulkers between episodes, he finally installs a bunch of them on separate platforms within his factory chimney, and challenges first himself and then the other hermits to levitate through the glass at the top and out into the sky. Presumably so if someone fails, he can say, you lose, good day sir. Oh, that's gonna hit me, that's gonna hit me, and that should do it. We are out. <laughs> There we go. But when he comes back down to Earth, mostly to kickstart his slime farm so he can get sticky pistons for a redstone door, he spots Mumbo's moon temple and decides to burn his bed too. I guess with the moon taking up more than half the sky now, at least the phantoms will be easier to spot. Well, but it's raining now, and if I sleep, then the rain will go away. Is that... I guess... I guess it's a whole movement here. Unfortunately, the one crack scientist that could knock some sense into the cultists is busy knocking some sugarcane out of a farm. Not for long though, the newest in ZF Innovations is a slime block flying machine that harvests a whole lot of resources in one massive swing, as well as whoever happens to be in the laboratory at the time. Thwomp. Oh, oh it makes like a noise, like a thwomp kind of thing, and uh, crash into the other side very uh, abruptly, but that's fine. There are, of course, a few issues with having dripstone, sugarcane, and bamboo all share a farm, especially if you don't bother picking any of them up. But the original design included even more resources, like pumpkins, melons, and even mushrooms. So really, this is Zed already toned down from his original ambitions. These experiments, however, do pose an interesting question. Couldn't they just bounce the moon back into orbit? So the plants are in and everything is grown up. Are we ready for our final grand test of this module? Uh, <laughs> there's everything there waiting, getting picked up, getting hoovered. And finally, there's B-Dubs, who doesn't seem too phased by the giant moon, but perhaps that's because he's lived in one this whole time. His focus is still on breeding the slowest and least jumpy horse he possibly can, even going so far as to rig up a fence gate to open when he can be let in to breed the next animals. But having seen the success of Tango's Ravager prank on Botum, he takes down the remains of Pew Pew the giant eyeball and builds a stone tribute to it on the Big Eyes Mountain. So this time the hills really do have eyes. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP and my name is PixelRiffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Season 2 of my Minecraft survival guide starts tomorrow, but to prepare for launch, I've put together a few introductory videos for folks who need a refresher before diving into 1.18. Check them out in this week's end screen theater. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.